and welcome to Crime and Justice. Yes, it's the afternoon for me. I don't normally come on till 8pm. But I'm coming on this afternoon because tonight I am going live, but I'm going live on my other channel for, for my 5G Diamond Art. Right, so, and I've got a lot to go through on this channel. So I'm trying to get in some afternoon live so i think i'll be going live again tomorrow afternoon and live again tomorrow evening on this channel so then hopefully i'll catch up with everything that i need to put out there to let to show anyway today again we've got another interview i'm not sure if we've seen this interview i have gone through my lives and i can't see it anywhere and I don't think I have shown this interview. And there's another interview um, from May the 18th. I know we're in June, July, August, September. But these were uh, these videos have only just recently come out in the last three, four weeks. Right? Because YouTubers have had to pay a lot of money for these videos and this all this information. So I'd like to say thank you to Grizzly True Crime for putting this out there for us to use if you haven't already please go over and su subscribe to grizzly true crime if there's anything you want to know on this case go over there grizzly true crime has it all it says it all on a playlist so if there's anything you want to watch go and watch it sign up okay Plus, if you haven't already, and you like what you hear and see, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video once you've watched it. I don't ask you to give me a like now, because you may not like what you hear and see. So I'll ask you, once you've seen the video, and you like what you hear and see, please give it a like, and please come and subscribe. Anyway, we're going to watch this interview. So this slide, this interview is what? An hour and one hour, 25 minutes. Right, so I'm not going to be on here for three hours, okay? I think I might be able to just speed up just a little bit. I don't want to speed up too much. And I'll put the subtitles on, okay? Let's get this large in. Let's get me off here. So it's a full screen. So this is credit to Grizzly True Crime. And this the interview, police interview on February the 29th. This is the interview after she was shown. Well, I told by the police on the 28th that they believe her daughter is, un is dead, unalived. After they've shown her videos, and she still sat there in disbelief and still did not believe Stefan had anything to do with it. To the point where after that, in after that police interview she had on the 28th, she left and phoned his father phoned Stefan's father and told him to get him a lawyer. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, but if someone had just sat me down, showed me photos of my daughter with him, and the, pos and the possibility that she she's in the car already dead, I would not be coming out of that police station phoning his father up to get a lawyer for him. I would be coming out of that police department to go and buy myself a shovel so I could battle a little shit to death and bury him. Sorry. Sorry. Didn't mean that. Anyway, that's just how I feel. But this is Jen Soto we're talking about. The mother of Madeline Soto, who obviously thought 
even in this interview, even in this interview, even in the next interview you will see, which is from my DI team, it's unbelievable how she behaves. So let's listen to this. All right, the date is originally nice. That's like four times five on nine p.m. We are at four zero one two Santa Maria Drive. Uh, reference case number two four zero zero eighteen oh nine. It's myself, Detective Morris, Detective Smallwood, and Jennifer Soto. So, um, to give you a little bit of what's happening now, there's a few other additional pieces of evidence that we're collecting at the time. Okay, um, some of that evidence came from Stefan's phone. Some of the pictures that were on the phone um, that we identified belonging to Maddie as well. So clothing that she was wearing, that sort of stuff. That's what we're collecting. Okay. Um, we'll, we will leave you an evidence sheet to let you know what we took. Uh, everything that we've taken from the house is an evidence sheet that's going to be left here for you. Okay. Um, it may take a little bit because what they do is they take a picture of it, they collect it. For the next one, take a picture of it, collect it. So it's going to be a little bit, but it shouldn't be too long. Okay, so we spoke yesterday, and we've got a little bit more information since the last time we spoke. Last night, I guess it would be. Um, so, so I'm going to ask you to go through this again Monday morning when you're asleep, Stefan and Maddie were upstairs, and she's going to school. Run me through that morning again. How, like, you mentioned something about you hearing noises, then you woke up. So how exactly did that go down? Uh, Monday morning, I was woken up by some concerns coming into my bedroom to try to put the leash on the dog. He was saying, group leash up, um, and trying to leash him up. I got up off the bed at that moment because my dog has a tendency to pee a little bit when you're directly to leash on him. Um, you have to let him um, He got the leash on the dog and told me, okay, don't worry about it, just go back to sleep. And I said, okay, so I went back to sleep. Um, Okay, I'll go back to sleep. No, well, you know what? I'm awake now, so and I've got to go to the doctor's at half nine. Leave here at half nine, which was still way early, being as her appointment wasn't till quarter past ten, and it only takes her fifteen minutes to get there. So she says, right? But she's leaving at half nine, quarter to ten. I might as well stay up now. That way. I can see Maggie. I, I say to her to Maggie before she goes to school and tell her that I'll be picking her up from school and all that lot. No, no, none of that. None of that. No. Okay. And back to sleep she goes. I think this was around... I'm assuming this was around 8 o'clock in the morning because I'm assuming, oh, oh, he's getting ready to take her to school. He's walking the dog before he does that. I'm glad she said, assuming it's about 8 o'clock, because before she said it was about, it was around 8 o'clock. And we all know it wasn't around 8 o'clock. She now knows it wasn't around 8 o'clock. Right? But she's assuming because she's thinking, well, he's taking her to school. He'll leave about quarter to nine, ten to nine. So he's taking the dog for a walk first. So it's about 8 o'clock. So I'm glad she said assuming. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what time it was, but I think it was already the morning. Okay. Um, I, I thought I had heard somebody in the kitchen. Um, I don't know who it could be. Um, but um, I, just, I, I just heard her sound, but I'm not sure who it was. Who was in the kitchen? Could have been Stephanie, could have been Maddie. Okay. Could have been one of my roommates. When you, when the deputies first talked to you, when you were reporting, are missing. Yeah. You remember writing a statement? Yes. Okay. In that statement, you say you saw me. I, I saw. I know. I, I miss, remember. I didn't see her. Okay. I, thought, I, wanted, when, I wanted to believe I saw her, but I didn't. But when you're talking to the deputy on the body cam, you describe what she's wearing. Because she had picked it up the night before. Okay. Um, I told her to set up her clothes the night before I had it ready. She was ready to go. Did you do a interview with Fox 35 recently? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, in that interview, you say something to the effect that you don't want her to come home. Do you remember that? No. I agree. She didn't say that. She said she didn't want her to come home harmed. 
Steam wanted to come back home. Right? Like, hurting anyway. Not whom, harmed. Because when you go over to the channel which be, whose video channel whose video I've got this off, right? When you go over to her channel, she'll show you the clip where she says, I don't want her to come back harmed. Not whom, harmed. No. Why that's part of the interview. Yes. I don't know if you listen to it or no, saw it. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can Google it to see, to see if you misspoke. Or... I think you misheard. I think the law enforcement there misheard. Because she didn't misspeak. She, she didn't misspeak. She didn't. She said, I don't want her to c come back harmed. <laughs> I remember calling, asking her to come home, please come home. I miss you, I want you here, like, please be safe. I remember saying that. Okay, um, I, I want to touch a little bit more, go more in depth on the relationship that you have with Stefan. Okay. Now, you said you guys have been dating for a while, and then you kind of broke up, and it's been on and off for a few years, I guess you said, right? Yeah. Um, during that time, was he seeing anybody else? Oh. I was told at one point sometime last year that, hey, the girl I was hanging out with, one of my coworkers I was hanging out with uh, outside of work, work was that I was hanging out with, I was really having sex with her. Because mm -hmm. um, I asked him, like, did you have sex with her? Like, mm -hmm. the you were just hanging out, did you have sex with her? And he admitted that he did. Um, um, he claims Mary Ellie, but I'm not sure what I mean. Okay. Um, now, the relationship that you have, was Stefan. You told me that you got you haven't had sex in a while. Yeah. Um, when you guys were together and intimate with each other, this is maybe a little uncomfortable, but something that we have to discuss is when you guys were intimate with each other. Um, a lot of people call it vanilla sex. Mm -hmm. Some people call it you know whatever whatever kind of sex you want to call it. Mm -hmm. How would you describe you and Stefan when you guys were intimate? Pretty vanilla. I would say just missionary and. Oral, mm -hmm. but nothing, nothing more than that. Okay. Has that. he ever asked you to perform a certain way or um, anything that you think would be out of the ordinary? He's, um, I think he's joked around about wanting anal sex mm -hmm. and like, yeah, we should do that, we should try that. And I'm like, absolutely not. No, I, to me, his penis is average size, but they, Trigger warning you, trigger warning. There's trigger warnings in this, okay? So I should have warned you before. So trigger warnings. It hurts. So I don't, I don't want, even normal sex hurts me, so I just didn't want to do okay. it. More honestly. Okay. Um, nothing other than that that you think would be out of the ordinary? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, so he is on medication. You told me he's on medication for some. some Something. Insomnia. Can you say that right? Uh, um, sleep apnea. Yeah. yeah. And then, I believe you said ADHD. Yeah, and also anxiety. Okay. Anything else? I think of. He did have, I think, a vial of, I'm not sure if it's Viagra or Cialis, but one or the other. Mm. Uh, I know he was having a hard time getting an erection or, or being able to enjoy getting off. Um, and he ended up figuring out it was. He couldn't figure out. He went to the doctor trying to figure out why he was having these issues. Mm -hmm. It must be something mental because physically, mm -hmm. his body's mind should be acting normal. Okay. We found out it was a side effect due, due to the alcohol medication he was on. Mm -hmm. he was not. No, it wasn't a side effect due to the medication. It was a side effect due to the fact that you weren't a 13 year old woman. Young girl, I should say. That's what. I suppose his medication wouldn't help, but the fact that he's, he had a, a liking for young girls would be a factor as well. Enjoying himself sexually once he got up for a while and was able to enjoy himself again. I think uh, it was only for the Cialis, right? Gotcha. Okay. 
Um, would he ever talk to you about what kind of porn he liked watching or anything like that? Have you ever gone to watch porn with him or anything like that? No. Okay. I know, Maddie, what medication did she take? She wants. At least this, with this mother, she don't go the HIPAA law, like some parent, you know, on another case. She's constantly um, she had an asthma inhaler. First time I've heard a mention. The asthma inhaler. First time out of all the interviews, out of the body cam footage on the night she went missing, out of the one, two, the in the police when they interviewed on the twenty seventh and on the twenty eighth, no asthma inhaler was mentioned. This is the first time I've heard it mentioned. Is in this interview. Yeah, that's when you were. I can't think of any other one. Does she take that medicine as well? The asthma medication, yes. The asthma medication, yes. Go to school mm -hmm. and the anxiety medicine gave it to her when she's at home. How does she react to the medicine? How does her body react? Okay. No side effects, no nothing here. Okay. Um, and she takes it in the morning, right? Or probably in the afternoon or evening. Time close to bed. We usually won't sleep for sleep. Eight. Um, that would be a concern. Night. Uh, the asthma medication was and the GI medication and, um, was given. Um, and then medication that you take. Yeah. I take. My name. It's for bipolar medication. I take anxiety medication. Uh, I'm also prescribed medication. I had actually surgery a few years ago, so I'm vitamin mm -hmm. deficient, so they give me some pain medication mm -hmm. to keep my vitamins balanced. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Um, all right, so going back to the morning that Stefan takes her to school, you said you think it's around 8 o'clock when you physically see Stefan mess with the dog? Yes. Okay. Um, and you don't see Maddie anywhere? I don't. When Maddie gets dressed for school, like now that I've seen it inside of the, the house, it looks like a majority of her clothes are in that little partition area in the living room. Yeah. Does she have clothes anywhere else? Like, how would, where would she put clothes to, like, to wear to school? Where would she get dressed? She would get dressed in her bedroom, right there, in the living room. Mm -hmm. All her clothes are there. Mm -hmm. uh, when she takes off, off her clothes, her dirty laundry hamper is typically in my bathroom downstairs, mm -hmm. and she'll just dump in the basket, but there is no basket there right now. She's jumping everything on the floor. Mm. Um, I think the basket is currently being used with clean clothes, so I just want to keep the clean clothes under clothes. The clothes on the floor right now uh, was in the basket. It should be in the cafe. Not very close, I think. Um, okay. Um, when you go to sleep, when you were sleeping in that night, was your door open or shut? It is left cracked open. Okay. okay. Would you see or hear <laughs> Maddie going to get changed? <coughs> I would say yes, but if I weren't asleep, I think I was asleep because I didn't hear anything until Stefan came and woke me up to the dog. So he woke you up to help with the dog? Yeah. Okay, so you didn't hear tussling around or wrestling around the kitchen that made you wake up to go help? No, no, no. It was him. He, he came directly into my room and grabbed the dog, and I got a fresh shot up to try to help him. Um, it, was, it wasn't until later that, um, after that, I heard uh, wrestling in the kitchen. Okay. Um, so he takes 
dog out, the potty or whatever it may be, and he comes back inside. Do you see when he comes back inside? Um, do you remember him leaving, saying bye to you, or anything like that when he's taking Maddie to the school? I don't know. So I think at this point I was already back to sleep. Okay. I'm pretty sure when, when he went to walk it off and left, mm-hmm. I thought I'd back to sleep. Okay. Now you go back to sleep. You wake up because you have a doctor appointment. You go get blood drawn or something like that. And you told me your appointment was around 10 or something like that, 9, 10? Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Okay. Um. So you go to this appointment, and on your way back, did you talk to Stefan on the phone at all? I know I talked to him while I was in the park, I'm not waiting for my blood work to happen. Mm-hmm. I just don't recall if I called him on my way home as well. It would seem like I would be. But I just can't 100% tell you if he could do that or not. Okay. At what time did you and him back up here? So I got back from my blood work appointment anytime between, say, 11, 15, 11, 30, so sometime around that time. And he, was he already here? Yes. Um, what did you guys talk about when you got home? What happened this morning, um... What did you say what happened this morning? He's like, you had a good morning, you made really good time. Maddie got ready super quick, uh, we were out the door super quickly, um, I was super impressed with our time. I tried to mention Maddie to go have McDonald's breakfast a few, uh, few times, but she changed her mind and decided she didn't want to, she just wanted to sleep in the car. And the thing is, the night before, we had discussed, oh, Maddie, maybe you should leave a little bit earlier than normal so that you can go get breakfast with him. That would be a really cool, really cool day to start on Monday. Right after your birthday, having McDonald's breakfast. And she's like, what's well, something? Good idea. So, um, they were supposed to go on to McDonald's, but he told me he didn't. Um, he told me he had left his phone because I had, um, uh, he had already told me this already. Um, what else? Um, I sat in my room for a while and hung out. No. Um, he discussed having to reset his phone even though he didn't want to. No. Yeah. I don't know about you, but in every interview she has done, right, she seems too calm. I know she's on medication that can calm me like calm you down but come on this woman on the 26th her daughter goes missing on the 27th she does tv interviews online interviews police interviews with both kissing me and orange county which was the sex crimes union right and she does interviews then at the police station on the Wednesday. She does, and then today she doesn't, and yet on the Wednesday she was told they believe her daughter was dead by the way she was sitting in that car and everything. So, and yet she's sitting here doing this interview like it's just any other day. I would be a total wreck in all of those interviews. I'm sorry, I'd like to have got a family member to do any interviews with like on the TV people and internet people. You know what I mean? There's no way I could have sat. I couldn't have sat still for more than two minutes. I'd be up and down. I'd be like a jack in the box. Where's my daughter? What's up with her? Is she- is she okay? Is she eating? Is she warm? Is she dry? Is she, you know what I mean? All that would be going through my head on the Monday evening and the Tuesday. 
and even the Wednesday morning, I would be worried sick about my daughter. Then after being told and shown those pictures on the Wednesday, I'd be wanting to dig, smash his head and dig a grave. Why? And then today, she still heard all that info. And yet today, on the Monday, Thursday, the 29th, she's still calm. Oh, that was he discussed needing to update his phone because he's been avoiding an update for so long. But I think it's time to do it. And I said, just do it. Just do it. And he started the update. And then what, through the update, he's like, oh my God, I don't know about the enterprise, but I just factory raised my entire phone. And I said, that was stupid. How did you have to do that? He goes, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I just clicked the button and it happened. And I said, oh, okay, that's unfortunate. Um, or did he tell you he meant to reset his phone? No, he didn't tell me he meant to reset his phone. He acted like and, and said that it was an accident. Mm-hmm. Um, did you find that one? Of course I find that fucking out. That's suspicious as hell. That? Have you ever reset any kind of phone? Me? I have no idea. Okay, have you ever had to do an update on the phone? I think so. On these phones, yeah, sometimes it'll ask me to just continue on with the update. And do I remember it ever asking me to erase? No. Yeah, okay. But he's got a Samsung, I have Apple, so I don't know if there's mm-hmm. a difference around. So. All right, now that you mentioned phones, uh, uh, so Maddie had a phone, yeah. and explain to me what her attachment is to her phone. Her phone is her life line. She, that's how she talks to all her friends. That's how she talks to all any of us. Um, she's constantly on video chat with her best friend or talking to them uh, or playing video games with them. But she's on her phone pretty often. Um, what exactly? So... Um, at one point you told either a deputy or office or detectives that sometimes she leaves her phone at home when she goes to school. How often do you think that is? I would say once every few weeks. It's, it happens a lot. Like for me, that's a lot. Um, she has a date. She's very forgetful. She'll set something down completely forget what she said it later. Um, where I found her phone was on her dresser. So I'm assuming she placed it there while she was getting ready and completely forgot about it, got ready to go to her backpack and left. Um, but it was on the dresser in front of her TV. Um, but for me, that's a normal, that's a normal thing for her to forget her phone. Now, when she, do you remember what time she went to bed? Uh, on Sunday? I sent them to bed around 11 o'clock. Did you see him or her anytime after that? Other- then in the morning, or talk to them. Either we text or yell through the wall. Or no, that's not that. uh, if anything, Stefan may have come down to use the restroom. Um, Why wouldn't you use the restroom upstairs? Because uh, our roommate does not like sharing. <laughs> our roommate does not like sharing bathrooms with that, and she asked that we don't use our bathroom, um, or that, that he doesn't use the bathroom specifically. Um, so we respect her wishes, and he's going to use the bathroom. So we'll um, were you supposed to work? And you told me you worked the front desk at Cornell Springs. Yes. How long have you worked there? A week. Okay. Did you work anywhere prior to that? I was a substitute teacher for early education. And how long did you do that? Maybe a month or two. Uh, not very long. Uh, and then before that, I've been unemployed. I've been living off disability, essentially. I'm disabled. Okay, um, why are you disabled? From what? A bunch of things. Uh, primarily PTSD. From what? PTSD, bipolar 2, generalized anxiety, um, ADHD. I think that's pretty much it. Okay, if you want me to ask, then what happened? I went on a date with a guy I had met. Was it before Stefan? Or? Yes. Okay. It was a few years before seven. Maybe the year before seven. But, um, I met a guy at a car dealership who interviewed me for a job. I turned the job down. He said, Oh, great, I can't take my employees. And I said, Oh, what do you mean? He goes, Yeah, I'm going to take you out on a date. I said, Oh, wow, I've never been asked out on a date in person before. I'm going to go out on a date. 
that we drove the back of his place. Um, if you just work for your table, take a quick break. My entire game is focused around now. Oh, no, this is. I would wait. That first thing in the morning, make sure she's ready, make her her breakfast, get her backpack and water bottle ready. Uh, she's taking lunch, get her some lunch ready. Um, this is me doing this while she's getting ready. Um, walk the dog, uh, come back, make sure she takes all her medications before school. Um, Take her to school, come back. back. I typically have a bunch of doctor's appointments to go too often. So I'm either at doctor's appointments. If I'm not at doctor's appointments, I'm just here at home, probably napping, resting, just waiting until it's time to pick up from school again. Um, she was my entire everything. Everything made was my everyday was for her. Did uh, someone know about your doctor appointment on the way? What your plans were on Sunday? I must have told him Sunday night, yeah, or Sunday. Because there's no way, there's no way I could have told him Monday morning if he, if he didn't have a song on him, and I didn't really talk to him that morning. Um, Where'd you meet him? We both worked out of real estate office of a fly drive somewhere. Um, they're called Eco Homes. Mm. I don't think they sustain the Eco Home Company. Um, I think he was a real estate agent for them, or did warranty work for them, and I was... An appointment setter. I mean, I didn't have that job very long. I got fired. Just right after my PTSD incident, I couldn't hold on to that at all. So, when you and Stefan would hang out, say Maddie's at school and you two wanted to hang out, or the three of you wanted to hang out, like what would you guys do? Like, where would you go over? <sighs> Primarily Disney. He and Pass Holders, we both worked for Disney at one point. Um, well, at least he worked out there at one point. I still there. But, um, we go to Disney. We go to Disney. We stay at home and like um, they would play board games, or uh, we watch. Well, we do, we loved watching movies. We would always have family time just watching a movie. Like I felt like it, it was one of our projects to make sure yeah. that she watched all the good movies from the eighties and nineties that we watched. Mm-hmm. Watching, I just wanted her to like, have the knowledge of pop culture. Mm-hmm. So we, um, last movie we watched with her was Sister Act. When was that? Like, would you go out to, like, eat anywhere, like, a favorite restaurant or anything like that? The only restaurant I think we frequented a handful of times in the last year is La Mexica. It's on Papa Colombia. Um, honestly, living on disability and then his income at Disney, like, it wasn't enough to survive. Um, we really didn't eat out often. Okay. Okay. Would you go, like, visit any parks or, other than, not Disney parks, but, like, Neighborhood parks or anything like that? No, we'd hang out right here at this, this lake. Mm-hmm. I'd really like hanging out at this lake and just drawing, sitting on one of the benches and drawing. Um, any other park? I, no, not really. Now, what if it was just you and him? So going out on a date or wherever? Where would you guys typically go? So, due to money, hardly ever went out on a date. Um, One date I can think of that we went on, and that was like years ago at the beginning of our relationship where we went to Disney Springs and went to Edison. I don't think we, were, we have we had many date nights, just him and me. It's always been the three of us doing something, going to dinner, going to Disney Springs. Mm-hmm. Um, we visit Disney Springs sometimes, often, not often, but sometimes. Uh, we really like that restaurant, Deluxe Burger. Mm-hmm. Um, Shane, Shane, you know, it. Now, the dynamic between you three. I know you told me that sometimes you and hers would sleep in the bed. Yep. Sometimes the three of you would sleep in the bed. And then sometimes you would send him and her to a bedroom so you could get a good night's sleep. Yeah. How long has that been going on? Okay, so... I'm going to say back in June. 
primarily the three of us sleeping in bed together all the time. And why? How did that start? Maddie's always slept in the bed with me. Mm -hmm. She's always slept in there. Uh, only when we lived in that apartment in Northport did she have her own bedroom, mm -hmm. and she could we could afford for her to have her own room. Um, so that was the only time she's actually had her own room. Here, she's always shared a room with me. Um, when she was a baby, she had her own bedroom here for a few years. But when she got older and we started having roommates and all that stuff, she started to stay with me in my bedroom. Um, Stefan, well, the, during the times that we did live with Stefan, it would be the three of us in this bed down here, down in the master bedroom. It wasn't until June of last year that we had broken up. And I said, okay, I don't want to sleep in the same bed with you. Please move upstairs. Mm -hmm. And you move upstairs. Um, at this point, Maddie pretty much slept with me all the time. I think I can count. I think I can count maybe on one hand and how many times she's gone upstairs to sleep with him alone. Because I, even I, wasn't comfortable with it. I was like, no, that, that, this it doesn't look right. Like, it just doesn't seem right. Like, I, I'm not comfortable with it, Maddie. You got to sleep with me. And I told him that. But there are times that they begged for sleep with but we're like, please, please, you just want to stay up late watching movies. And I would be too tired to stay up late. So I, I would say, fine, go ahead and do it. But just this once, like. Where did you start becoming comfortable with it? I don't know if I was ever comfortable with it. But you, you told them to go Sunday night to go sleep together. I did. That was a selfish move on my part. That's what I wanted. Good night's sleep. I didn't want her kicking me or holding onto me or waking me up. Or to hear her alarm so that it woke me up. I wanted to keep sleeping until I needed to sleep because I just had had not with my training schedule. I have had not I have not had a good night's sleep. My medication was out of whack. I was feeling funny and not like myself. And I knew that I needed another night's sleep and my medication and my body like ASAP, so I needed to go to bed. So that was I wasn't even comfortable sending her that night but i just did it for my own selfish reasons okay did you know he's never said anything to you or anything about it if anything i've always i've always told him that my biggest fear is that this would turn to a Woody allen situation where the stepdaughter fought or the dad grooms the child and the child then turns 18 and ends up running away with him I told like that was my biggest fear. I don't ever want that happening. Like, what? I heard about this being said, but what? If you never, if that even come into my your head, why on earth would you let your daughter sleep in the same? Tell your daughter to go and sleep in the same bed with a thirty-seven-year-old man. What? Oh, I'm sick. You can't do that to me. Like, why would you say that to him? Because I never, I never trusted. I, I grew up being told never trust a man. My mm -hmm. mom put that in my body. Never trust a man. And like, I did not complete. The logic in my head would say, you know, he's been in your life for seven years, nothing's happened. He hasn't shown you anything that he's weird or that he's done any or that he's interested in her or said anything about her body or talked to her about her in any specific way that would freak me out. He's never said anything like that or, or shown me any of those signs. So I thought I could trust him, that he was safe, that he was a good guy and that he was taking care of my baby and loved her the way I loved her, but I was wrong. Oh, he loved her. Just not in the way that a 37-year-old man should love a child. Yes, because you may think he was whatever I know I don't know what keeps <laughs> talking I know that we jacked a lot. Oh, here comes the water work. <laughs> so I, I need you to, I know this is a lot, 
but Monday morning, I really need to focus <laughs> on his actions. It's Monday morning. Okay. So, you go to help him with the dog. Okay. Yeah. And do you or do you not see Maddie? I do not see Maddie. Okay. Would at that time would it be normal for her to be awake getting up ready for school? Uh, yes. Okay. And according to you, she typically does that in her bedroom. Yes. Okay. When you go out of your bedroom to help him with his dog. I never left my bedroom. Oh, he you was, didn't? He was in my bedroom. He walked in. The dog was on top of my bed. And- he went to leash the dog on top of my bed. I got off, off the bed to try to help him with that. And then he said, no, no, go back to sleep. So I did. Okay. Um, he tells you that he took Maddie to school and, and drops her off somewhere near the school so she could walk because she doesn't want to be seen inside of his car. Yeah. Okay. Do you believe him? I don't think so. <laughs> Why? Because of the evidence. Because of the photos. Because of what you're telling me. Because of the- He's clearly a liar. <laughs> I want to hold my daughter's alive and out there that she was taken. I don't know anyone. Well, I, I can be fairly confident that no, a stranger did not take Maddie. The only person she was with was Stefan. I don't know. I don't know what's in Northport other than his parents. Did you know he's going to Northport? I thought... When I woke up, he wasn't in the hotel. I thought... Um, I thought he had gone to the Target closet right next door to the, the hotel we were staying at. Because he likes to go shopping when he shows. Um, but that's what happened. And according to you guys, he actually went all the way to Northport and came back. So when he gets stressed, he likes to go shopping. Yeah. Okay, did he tell you he was going shopping on Monday? Uh, he was going to go stop at a few game shops to see if they had any Lorcana cards for sale. Would that be considered stressful shopping? Can you mind? Are your eyes? No, because he does this often. He'll, he'll, he'll want to see what's going to have what in stock to see if he can afford to buy it or not. Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll go from shop to shop. He sometimes he does this. <coughs> he does this. Okay. Um, so going back to it, he says he drops Maddie off and he sees her walking towards the school. Yeah. And then, did he tell you where he went after that? He said he drove around for a little bit, uh, killing time, and then... Killing time for what? For the beat drop to open. Okay. And then I think he told me he waited, no, he told me he waited for the beat shop for it to open. But I think that it didn't open. It never opened in time when it was supposed to. You know what vape shop, vape shop you went through? Yes. And I know that that, I, I brought this vape shop up to the, one of the other times earlier and I showed them this location. But I, that vape shop is located in the plaza where it has an Amazon on one corner and then on the other corner. So if you guys could, you guys could like find video footage of if he was even there pulling it out. But, and you know for a fact this is where he went? That's where he told me. Yeah. If, if it's any big shop, it's just a shop. And Why that one? Why that specific one? Uh, he likes the brand, uh, the Eastmoker company. Um, and that's where he gets all of his age stuff. He won't go to any other big shop around here. He goes to that one. Um, what time is the big shop supposed to open? Is that right? Okay. Um... When you guys are here, are you guys assigned Roger Motors? Yes. The, how many of those do you have? I have one. Stefan has one. I'm not sure if Angelica or Mel have one. Where does it, where, I mean, is it something you keep in your pocket or? I keep it in my car. What about Stefan? I think sometimes he brings it, leaves it in the car, sometimes he brings it in with himself. It depends. Why would- what do you bring it inside? I'm not sure. Does that seem normal to you? To bring it out of inside the house? No. But he said, he said that morning he left the house. 
He said that morning he left the house and then returned again because he forgot the garage clicker, so he came back to get the clicker. I think that was odd. He's a very forgetful guy. I don't fucking know what to think of him anymore. I don't know if he's lying. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So you know you're. He was lying because when he come up to the main gate, the security guard spoke to him and apparently he said his clicker wasn't working. It, the security guard seen the clicker in his hand. So why did he go back to the house for? Hmm? What was it he needed from the house so badly? That he went back to that apartment, that house, that complex, with Maddie still in the front seat of the car, slumped over, in a precarious way sort of thing, and for what? Because we know it wasn't the clicker, so what was it he, he was wanting to come back for? Could he have probably realised, oh, I know we haven't got a rubber shoe. I couldn't find it. I'll go back and see if I can find that other shoe. But then realised he couldn't because it was in your room, Jim. Because apparently we think the dog picked it up and put it in your room because it was where the dog would lie, in the corner. So why did he come back to the house? For at ten past quarter past eight in the morning. Oh, all around. Yeah. That's Maddie asleep in the car. Maddie's not asleep in the car. What do you mean? Do you believe? Do you believe Maddie's asleep there? Is she dead? I don't know. Oh my God, is this, I, did, I thought they'd shown her this picture yesterday on the 28th, but obviously they hadn't. Oh, I don't know where she's at. So this is at 7.30 in the morning. Ish. But she said he thought around 8 o'clock. We can assume that he was getting her ready. For so mm. That would be the time he would get up and take her. Is there in there? Just for the recording. This is a video from within the complex that shows the front angle through the windshield. Yes. So the next picture is going to be Maddie in the front seat of Stefan's car. You see right here? Mm -hmm. That's taken at 9 o'clock near SeaWorld. 9 o'clock in the morning? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping you can tell me that. Sea He's near SeaWorld. That's International Drive. Does he know anybody out there? I don't think so. so he, doesn't have, to go. he doesn't have anything. Like, not locally. Doesn't have anywhere he would like to go. Is there a special place he likes to go? I'm sorry, but I'd be going. Even if they're asking me questions about, look, here he is, he's on this route. Do you know? I'd be going. You're telling me my daughter's dead? You're telling me in that car my daughter's dead? You know what I mean? Anything else I'd be asking would be, uh, forget that. You're telling me my daughter's dead? You know what I mean? I just can't get over how complacent she is.
Here's another picture from the dumpster in Venetian Bay of Stefan throwing away trash. What day? That's going to be Monday morning, right around 7.45. Has it been turned? Has it already been taken? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think was in there? Closed? I don't know. What makes you say closed? I, I can't tell what he's holding. I don't know if it's a plastic bag full of stuff or... Inside of that bag is Maddie's backpack, Maddie's school computer, and one of her crocs. Are you telling me we're looking for Maddie right now? We're looking for Maddie, absolutely. 100% we're looking for her. I don't know. What's that? Sure that way? I don't know. I can't answer that. I have a feeling that you and Stefan have some sort of communication on places he likes to go or so, because some of the questions that I ask, it seems like you almost not cover up for him, but kind of defend him or have answers to some of these questions. Yeah. Because I want you to have more further insight as to why he likes these things. <laughs> but him, but you saying he is forgetful. And, and, and Maddie, too, I just want you to understand, like, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. We're both very, we're all very forgetful. We're all very But why would you want you, you, why would you want them to understand his way of thinking, his way of behaving? You've been told the day before you were shown pictures of your daughter with him. Right? And you are still defending him by trying to explain to the police how he is, his way of thinking, his way of behaving. Why? Why? It's just part of our ADHD. I just want you to know, like... What kind of grades does she make in school? Not great. What about her attendance record? She's had a lot of doctor's appointments that we've gone to, so she's not... A lot of absences. Are they excused or unexcused? I want to say for the most part excused. Every, every time I speak to a doctor's office, I bring it up. Mm -hmm. Do you know that for sure? Or we're, we're working on getting her school attendance. I'm just wondering if you'd be a parent, I would hope that you would know what kind of like what her. Because I know my daughter's school that if any of them miss one period or two periods or something like that, they will call me and say, hey, such and such missed periods three or missed period seven. Or, or something like that. They don't do that. They send out an email and a voicemail. They're not going to voicemail saying your child is absent today from That's what I just said. School. But not period one, two, three. It, and it's not early in the morning like some other seats do. It's late in the evening at five o'clock. Or it's really late. Yeah, totally after. Bye. Yeah, totally after. Like, it's Have you late. got a lot of those uncle of her missing class? Um, you should know that. Yes or no? As a mother, you would know. I would, whether you'd yeah, I've got a good number of those voicemails and stuff. But I mean, even with even with the two doctors' notes, I'll still get those phone calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they miss. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've gotten a lot of those. Okay. When you say she doesn't make good grades, what's considered not making good grades? C under C D F. Um, she's always so she's got an IED. Mm -hmm. Um, she struggles with. She's got a few learning disabilities with reading, with mathematics. Her ADHD she doesn't help anything at all. She's very spacey, very like she gets to squirrel and completely forget. Like the teacher, the teachers have told me, like they'll tell her to do her work and she'll be like, oh, okay. And then see something completely get, get sidetracked and then forget. Mm -hmm. And they're always on top of her. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, she's just I forgot where I was going to I'm sorry. So okay, her grades and attendance. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, um her grades suffer because of her ADHD for sure. And I, I think that's one of the biggest reasons she got an IEP is because she's technically two years behind with her reading level. Um, okay. What grade is she in? Seventh. Okay. And we, I know 
we talked last night too, and I just want to reiterate, has she had any changes in her behavior in the past few years? I'll say yes. Um, but it was all around where people read it, mm -hmm. and like the typical teenage the attitude, the sass, the talking back, the disrespect, the <laughs> pushing boundaries. She was very much doing that. But that calmed down over the last few months. It got even better when Stefan moved out and went to Northport. Um, oh, wow. And you didn't put two and two together. You know what I mean? Oh, she seems a lot calmer. We're not fighting no more. Assassin's has gone, uh, whatever, has gone. Ever since Stefan moved back to Northport, was, oh yeah, what was going on then? What was making it so up in the air for Maggie? That now he's not here, she's a lot calmer. Think, woman, you stupid mother. Maddie and I were actually seeing a therapist together to try to like work through our issues because we were having problems communicating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Stefan, tell me about his. I know you say he likes play board games and all that stuff. Is he like. What else does he like to do for fun? He's a collector. He collects. Play sports or anything like that? No, he collects games and hot. He collects, you know what Tamagotchis are? Mm -hmm. He collects Tamagotchis, he's got so many of those. Uh, Digimons, lightsabers. Um, does, he, does he like to go camping? Does he like to go to the beach or any of that stuff? No, the beach gives him, makes him self-conscious because he doesn't like how his body looks. He calls himself flat. But, um, no, he's not. Yeah, he is flabby. Yeah, he's not wrong there. He is. I'm not the only person. He doesn't play sports. He doesn't like the beach. Okay, he used to... Okay, this, this may be relevant. Back, back a few years ago, he, um... I used to own a scooter, an electric scooter. And he owned something called a one wheel, which is like a... Kind of like a scooter, but with one big round wheel in the Um... We would take that and ride around the Kissimmee Trail connects back here. Mm -hmm. So we would take that to the Kissimmee Bridge, walk, do that trail over there, come back, or also go into Shingle Creek across the street, across Hopeland, go behind an apartment complex on the end of Shingle Creek. We would ride all of that and explore all of that wetlands and um, greenery back there. But we haven't done that in a while. We haven't owned scooters or other kind of devices in a few years. Tell me about, you said there was an apartment in the world. Yeah. Is that Stephen's mom? No. Yes? Or you guys have a separate apartment? Uh, we rented our own separate apartment. Okay, where was that? <laughs> Obviously, but you remember the public's name? And how long ago was that? This was back in 2020. Okay. I don't remember the month we moved in, but we moved out in November of 2020. We were there somewhere between six to eight months. Okay. Uh, let me see what I have. Oh, just two, three there? Yes, it's just three of those. Okay. Is Northport, I've never been there. Is it a big city, small city? Um, oh, I'm sorry. So the apartment we used to live in is in the town next door over. It's called Port Charlotte, Florida. Okay. Um, that's a small town. Northport, even smaller, I would say. Um, but Northport more, being more popular because of the town, which is Sarasota town, so it's, hmm. has more people living in it. Charlotte town is pretty small. Is it um, cool? I mean, there was a city center and a main, there was a tiny trail right, right through it. Okay. So, major road, lots of businesses, lots of shops. So, I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere, but. Fun fact is, Northport is the third largest city in the state of Florida, square miles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The name of the apartment complex I live in is called Charleston K. Is it Seven. Still, it just today? That's still what it's called? Rolling everywhere. Uh, not sure. Uh, you. you don't know him to 
still own it or rent it? No, because it was under my name. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the one who gave up the lease. Okay. As far as I know, it's still this. Oh, no, okay. oh I'm sorry. Yeah. And you guys, so you were in that apartment for roughly six to eight months, you said, right? Yes. Did you live in Port, or Port Charlotte or North Port for longer? No, we immediately. Only that, only that time we moved right back. Okay. And what would you guys typically do around there? We did absolutely nothing. It was during quarantine time, so we were very afraid of COVID. We were very afraid of going to the store and doing anything. Um, we stayed home, watched movies, watched a lot of Netflix, played a lot of board games. Um, but that was about it. We did so like, Sometimes we'd go to the beach, uh, Venice Beach. Yep. Um, but that's about it. We didn't really go anywhere. Not much stuff outdoors? Mm-hmm. No, just this Venice Beach. Okay. When did you realize that he went to report uh, recently? When the officer told me. Okay. So, what night was that? Last night. So he, they told you last night, or he went last night? They told me last night that he had okay. went early that morning to Northport. Okay. Um, were you guys staying at the hotel together? Yeah. Did you not notice him gone? Did you sleep through it? I slept through it. I went to sleep around 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And um, I did not wake up until 9, and that's when I noticed he was gone. And I called Stefan's dad, Chris, who was in the same hotel, and I said, hey, is Stefan with you? He goes, no, he's not with you. And I'm like, no, he must have left, and my car keys are gone. He's like, oh. And I'm just like, maybe he ran out to get some food, or maybe he ran out to get some something, um, or to Target. And he's like, okay, we'll just give him a little bit to wait. Why did you call him? Sorry. Stefan? Yeah, have fun. Um, and it, I think his dad eventually did give him a phone for him to use, but that was later that morning, and um, I was never given that phone number either, so I never had a way to contact him. Okay. Why do you think he was there? I was told he went into a storage unit. I have no freaking clue what he would be in the storage unit. Do you, do you know about the storage unit? I have, I have heard of the storage unit. I've always known Chris, Chris or his Parents always have storage units. They own a lot of shit. They're, they're kind of over the corners, but they own a lot of stuff. They have I think, a few storage units, or they did. I think they may have condensed down to just one, maybe. But um, yeah, we don't have storage units. If you were to leave from the city, what way would I go to get the North Port or Port Charlotte? I four down to seventy five. Is it one seventy nine? I think to Little Blade Road. Little Blade. Yeah. I'm sorry, but oh, this woman gets me so mad. She's just been showing photos of her daughter in a car that she thought was sleeping, but they're hinting at something else. And she said, She's dead. Right, and yet she's sitting through this interview. It's like it, nothing has happened. You know what I mean? I hope you go. I'm sorry, I can't do this. In, I can't do this. You've just literally told me you believe my daughter's dead, and now you want me to sit here and answer questions about that piece of SHIT. You know what I mean? I can't do that. When you did you see him when he got back initially? Yes. Did you ask him? Yeah, where the fuck he was. I'm like an officer's coming around to interview us. Where the fuck have you been? This would have looked terrible if you weren't there. And he's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I went out to get some food and I found a Wawa and then I got turned around and I got lost and then I made my way back here. And we're like, oh, okay. Not fucking thinking anything other than just believing him. I feel like so stupid because I don't know how long he's been probably been lying to me about the stupid shit for the longest time. Like I'm so he said he went out to get food. Yeah. And he, he came back with a, 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 he had a, a couple from Wawa. He was drinking a drink. Do you remember what time he got back? Like 11, 15. Yeah. Okay, so you were up around 9 ish, you just told me? Yeah. So from the time you were up, by the time he got back, roughly two hours. Yeah. Okay, and he came back with a Wawa. Yeah. Yeah. So 
during that time frame, he tells you he's been lost. That turned around, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, he, yeah, he didn't have a phone. He didn't know how to get back to the hotel room. Obviously, bullshit. You can tell him. No, but no, I'm, I'm speaking as from what I know right now. That's obviously bullshit. From what I was told by one of you guys, or from what I kind of calculated, he must have left the house in order for him to make this round trip trip to Northport and make it back by 11. He must have left five to six hours ago. Um, so I'm just like, that makes it like four o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, five o'clock, five o'clock, five o'clock, something like that. I'm just like, so he waited for me to fall asleep and then he left. And you said you went to bed around what? 3 30, 4 o'clock. 100%. He waited for me to fall asleep and he fucking left. Okay, I, I get that part. Are you 100% that you went to sleep around that time? Oh, that's what you're asking. Me. I thought you were confirming me like 100% of the time. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any way I can like. I saw the clock saying 3:30, but I got up to go to the bathroom. I was in the bathroom for a while, and then I came back. He was there. He was there. He was. So I went to bed around around that time. I was in the bathroom for. I think 10 15 minutes. I was, I had a terrible dinner and just was not okay. But when I got out, he was awake or he was sleeping. Okay. You actually mentioned, oh man, I woke up really early this morning, uh, around four. Yeah. You mentioned waking up around four ish because he had really bad diarrhea and he used the restroom. You mentioned that. Day. And just so I'm on the same thought process, what day were you guys in the hotel? What day were we in the hotel? Mm-hmm. Um, that happened Tuesday night. You can't even remember what not. Really late Tuesday night, so I think it was technically Wednesday morning when we checked into the hotel. It was really early. Um, but yeah, Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. Okay. Um. Christ, I had major surgery, and I had to, after that, I had um, some other treatment, and I had to go down to Glasgow for it. And I was put into a hotel, which was all paid for, which was great. And the room was paid for, for me and one other, which could have been my daughter or my son, whoever was staying with me at the time. Because I gave either my daughter up for a few days and then my son for a few days. I could tell you the day I went down and the day I come home, what I did every day, what I ate every day, it is ingrained in my head. She can't remember. This is only February 29th. The daughter only went missing, was reported missing on the 26th. And she can't remember what night or day she booked into the hotel. I want to divert a little bit um, with Maddie. Okay. Um, she disclosed to you about her has she had a period? Yeah, you know. Is she disclosed to you about that? Yeah. So do you know her regular cycle? Cycle? Uh I usually put it she usually tells me when she has it and we put it in an app. Mm-hmm. Um I must have missed this month. Or she must have not told me this month when she got it, but I had it I have it written down when she got it back in January. When should she have had it this month? Roughly. The beginning of the month. She got it in January 1st. Um, so it should have been around the end of February. Um, end of January 1st of February? Yes. Okay. And was she pretty consistent on telling you? Um, yeah, she would tell me when to a different period. And then she actually also told me every time she used the restroom. Like, not success. I pooped. I'm like, cool. Because right. it's exactly the um, And she didn't tell you about this last cycle? You find that odd? Yeah. Yes. Really great. Yes. Would there be 
um, obvious signs when she's on her cycle. As far as like certain products she might use. Yeah, her, her pads. Mm -hmm. um, the pads she would use. Um, I would probably get her a box every, every two seconds or so. It's like one box of last year. She would typically complain of her, her breast hurting, having terrible cramps. But I didn't hear any of that this morning. But you said she's been consistent every month telling me about her period. She's been late a few times and she's told me, or sometimes her period has lasted way longer than normal. Um, it's, I, I'll, I'll call it irregular because mm. mine was regular when I was younger too. So I just assumed just her body working through it kind of regulated itself. Do you find it odd that it would be a month late? Yeah. Yeah. I seriously think, because don't forget, we haven't had the option, we haven't even found her yet, right? That Madeline has not been found yet. This is the 29th. She wasn't found till the 1st of March. So I'm wondering if the police were hinting at could she have been pregnant? And if so, was that the reason Stefan took her life? I think she could have. I understand. Like you can be a light with your with your menstruate menstruation but not four weeks normally when you're four weeks late i can assure you every every woman is likely to be at the chemist buying a pregnancy test or doing something to check are they pregnant oh am i pregnant i'm four weeks late am i pregnant you know what i mean doing a check and if you get that one comes back negative, they do another one. If that one comes back, then maybe do three or four tests, pregnancy tests, and they could all come back negative, and then they go, okay, that's fine. I'm just really late this month. You know what I mean? Or they could be, go to the doctor and say, look, I'm late. Yeah, I've had these pregnancy tests, they've all come back negative. And they could be at an age where they could be going for the menopause. You know what I mean? And God, back to worst. So, it all depends. I, I, I would say most girls, if women, after four weeks, are like, okay, I'm four weeks late. That's not right. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks late, but not four weeks. Right? So, I think they... Was, just testing the waters. Those images you showed me with the car. Mm -hmm. Is there any more? Mm -hmm. I mean, none that I can show you right now, but yes. But we don't. We don't see what he has up on the car. Where do you think he would go? If I knew, I would tell you. What general direction did you say you headed in? He's all over the place. Thing is, he's all over the place. I'm going to. I, don't, I want you to take this the wrong way, but this is just. We've been doing this job a very long time, as you told all great my Uh, your emotion when I told you that you broke down like that. Remember that. Instantly crying. But when you talk about her possibly missing or, God forbid, deceased, that emotion changed. Yep. Maybe it changed. So, was no when I told you. 
That's how it changed. There was no emotion when you told me. You broke down. I started crying. Okay. But then when we show you, when I showed you the pictures and said that she may not be asleep in those pictures, your emotion just changed. I don't want to believe that. I want to. In my heart, I know you're showing me what you're showing me. You're telling me to throw away her backpack. And I want to assume the worst. I want to think, I don't want to assume the worst. I want to assume that she's still alive, that she's out there, that he's hidden her somewhere. But with what you're showing me, it feels like we're looking for her body. I'm just in shock. I don't want to, I don't want to believe that she said in those images you showed me. She doesn't look. She doesn't look like she's sleeping. Who sleeps? When you sleep in a car, you sleep with your head on the door. Her head was over here, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you... I don't know what you want me to say or do or... I just want my daughter back. And this is exactly what I was just talking about. We are literally having a conversation right now about Maddie possibly being dead. Yeah. And so calm. You have yet to shed a tear. But when I mentioned to you that he, you were crying violently almost. You understand what I'm saying? Because that was physical proof. That was proof. Mm -hmm. of what was happening. Mm -hmm. That destroyed me. Until that, that picture of her asleep or not asleep in the car is not proved to me until I see a body. Mm -hmm. I have hope that she's still alive. But I don't know what you're telling me. I'm starting to fucking doubt everything. But I can't tell you why I broke down over one and I'm being okay. this really serious now. I just... So here's what's going to happen. Starting tomorrow, it's actually already started, but tomorrow there's going to be information being released between our department and Orange County's Sheriff's Office is that now this entire investigation is the Kissimmee Police Department's investigation. I think I told you that other thing. Okay. Right now, we are probably going to start working this case as a homicide. Because he's in jail right now for okay, he's in jail for that. Not a word out of her mouth when he said we are now looking at this case as a homicide. Not a word. God. Can someone who knows this woman give her a slap, knock some sense into her? Please. It's like some mothers just don't, you know, can't show love. Don't know how to show love to a child. Right? And she's one of them. Because if she felt anything for her daughter, she wouldn't be questioning the police about those photos that she was shown. She still wouldn't be uh, supporting and backing the person they believe has harmed her child. You know what I mean? She would be back in the place every way, all the way. Go for it. Go for the go for whatever you can get out of him. Because I want him dead. You know what I mean? He's done this to my daughter. God help him if I ever get my hands on him. That's how I would be with the police. Because that's exactly how I would feel if someone harmed my child, my either my kids or my grandkids. As I said, don't trust a woman hmm, who watches 24-7 crime programs. There's a YouTube channel on crime and justice. 
don't trust this woman because she'll have, she'll go for everything. I will go for everything. I will. That person won't stand a chance if they, any harm come to to my kids or my grandchildren. And you'd be wanting the police to arrest him because if they don't, I'd clip him, put him six foot under. But for her to sit there and still say, I'm in disbelief, I'm in shock, I'm in this. I don't give two hoots. They've literally showed you a picture of your daughter dead. D-E-I-D. -E and you're, oh, okay. Oh, woman, grow up. But we believe she possibly has done something to Maddie. And we want to know where he would possibly go. Still no reaction. Well, this is going to be a very difficult situation. But do you have any knowledge of what he has done with her? I know we're a long way off this, but right, I know we're a long way off. But do you think when the time comes and it goes to cook trial? Because it's going to go to trial. Because they're going for the death penalty. So his his defense team his defense team is going to try everything possible to get that GP took off the table. You know what I mean? They'll like try every angle. So it's not as if oh can we make a deal? No. This is a death penalty case. We're not making a deal. Well, what if we tell you some names? That's the only thing I can think of is if he was to cooperate and give names out of more people, will they take the death penalty off the table? And then a deal could be struck up. But I don't want that to happen. I want this POS to go to court. I want to see him sit there. And I bet you he wouldn't even turn up. He wouldn't even turn up for any of the trial days. But I'm just wondering, when it, if and when it goes to trial, will Jen Soto be there going, oh, I love him really. I didn't think he'd hurt my daughter. I thought he loved her like I loved her. Yes, he loved her, but not the way you love her. Not in the way you should love a 13-year-old, sweetheart. You know what I mean? Would she be there still whining over him? You don't deserve to have children, sweetheart. You really don't. Because you can't show no empathy towards your daughter. Nothing. It's like, I just get the feeling, as I said, some parents don't know how to show love. I don't think she knew how to show Maggie love. I really don't. Because not only that, why would you, even if it's your father's house, I can't see your father charging you an extra 400 or 600 pounds a month for Madeline to have a room, right? So why couldn't you give Madeline that room? I don't understand that. As a grandparent, if I had a four-bedroomed house and my son or daughter needed somewhere to live, I'd go, yeah, I've got a four-bedroomed house, but it's going to be a HMO, oh, which over in the UK is a house multiple occupancy, right? So you have to have all the smoke alarms in, all the fire doors on, everything, all right? And if they said, well, what about my grand? What about my children? I go, okay. I've got a four bedroom house. You can have one room. I rent two other rooms out. And the other rooms for your grand, for your son or your daughter. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be charging my daughter or my son extra rent to give my grandchildren a room. I would not. 
so I just don't understand why she couldn't give Madeline that room. I wish I knew what I would tell you. <laughs> I can't. I mean, if you switch the opposite, that makes it official for me. Is there any more images you could show me? Not at this time. Oh my lord, this woman. She's showing emotion over a flipping backpack. He threw away my backpack. Who gives a hoot about whether he threw her backpack away? He's killed your daughter. He hung alive your daughter. And, but that's okay. But he threw her backpack in the bin. And that's all. No. No, love. Oh, God, this woman. Sorry, I'm getting so... I've actually got my 5G diamond art out on the table. I'm doing this while listening to, while listening to this because I'm trying to stay calm. It's not working. <laughs> How long is it going to do for this? Please tell me so much. If some... If he does not... Them to her that led her death yet, and leave them to prison for life. <laughs> He's probably going to prison for life. <laughs> so, like, multiple life sentences is fine. Fuck it, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Has he tried reaching out to you from jail? No. Has he tried reaching out to anybody from jail? I don't know. I haven't talked to, I talked to his dad earlier, but, um... He didn't share much information. I don't, I don't, I don't even... Did I ask him? I can't recall if I asked him. If he's switched off it. I don't, I don't remember his conversation this morning. Sorry. Why would you even ask the father if he switched that to his son? Why? We are going to check on the progress that they're making inside real quick. Um, Did he tell you where she's at? No. I was looking to, like, since, since when, like, in the hotel, and no, never. Like, we need to find her. I know. Man, I wish I knew where to tell you. I'd so love. I fucking wish. Could, could you show me, like, a map of where, where around town he was? I could point out maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. Too many places, it really is. Not me. Has he ever talked about giving Maddie medication? Like any of his medication? You don't think so? Or... No. Okay. Have you ever given her any of your medication? She's got her own medication. Do you double check her medication? When, when we give it to her? Yeah, I make sure I got the bottle or she grabs the bottle, but like somebody's got eyes on her, grabbing the pills and taking them. Like, this tag team situation, she's not allowed to take them alone. So we just make sure that we got to watch her. That I don't want her to accidentally take, grab the wrong bottle and accidentally take Adderall before bed because that sounds like a terrible idea. How long have you guys lived in Osceola County? On and off for four years. What about? On and off for six. Okay. Would you say he's pretty familiar with Oscar County? Does he venture off? No. Oh. I know he'll go, he'll visit certain, he likes to visit gaming shops and like board game shops. Um, that he drive around aimlessly just to kill, I mean, just to drive? I don't think so. I think he goes out with plans. Does he have close friends that live here? 
Most the majority of his time during the court card. Is he good with cars? Is he good with cars? No, he's not. We know how to change oil, change tire. I mean, supposedly he said he changed tire on Monday and hurt himself. So I don't. I don't have to have any tissues. Yeah. Good. Question. Mm -hmm. Did the vehicle you guys towed that was his? Did it have a donut on the car? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Do you not know his car? No, I do not know his car. I just oh. don't, don't remember. Uh, I just ever actually saw the donut around. I never came to inspect like the car. The one thing was that was that part of the story true? Did he actually get a flat tire? Who who is in St. Cloud? I don't. Only I know people in St. Cloud, and he doesn't know where they live. Um, and Does I, he know those same people? He's yeah, he's met them before and talked to them before when they come over here. Okay. Where do they live in St. Cloud? Off of Old Canoe Creek Road. I can try to get you an address. Sure. Has he ever went with you to see him? No. Never. No. I've never even gone to her house like that. I know, she always comes to my house. So they know each other, she lives in St. Cloud, but we've never gone to St. Cloud together with her, to her house. And how do you know her? she work with you? Yeah, she's an old co-worker from 14, 15 years ago. From busy? You no, know, uh, we used to work at a pizzeria. That was when I was a lot younger. <sighs> are you texting her? We doing the call or we doing text? No, I, I thought you were just going to pull it up. Creek? Yeah, I don't. I don't know exact. I don't know the exact street or address or. I want to say it's actually the one. Okay, pull up a map. So she lives off of this road right here, Nolte Road in St. Cloud. Mm -hmm. Nolte. That's 182 right there. Nolte, she lives around there. Can you, would you be able to point it to me? To which, which house? No. Not, not a specific house, but like, is it a neighborhood? Is it? Does she have her own land? It is in a neighborhood. I don't remember where, though. I don't know how far down I have to drive down Nolte. Um, Are you familiar with Nolte? No. No. No, I, I've only, I think I've only dropped her off at her house once. Dropped Maddie off there? No, no, no. My friend. Oh, your friend. <sighs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. yes. What was her name? Michelle. Michelle. Mason. M A S S. Two S's? Yeah. I don't think Stefan would know where she lives, but... No, I'm not saying that he did, but... I'm just trying to see who you would know in St. Cloud. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much the only person. There might be somebody else that lives, like, closer to Harmony. But that's the that's only people I know. How calm she goes. Oops. One minute she's literally in tears. Next minute she's so calm. I don't get her. I really don't get this woman. What does it say? And we've all listened to the last, the latest, the interview they did on the first of March. Mason, right? How you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Well, the one I'm going to be playing on for my, my the I think. That's where she gets like immunity. Hmm. That's where she gets like immunity. Why? I don't know. To be honest with you, they don't need her as a witness against him. They don't. They've got enough evidence. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. She's not a good witness to have it against to go up against him anyway because she's just not like he's gonna throw in her face by what you the one who got the solicitor for him. You was the one you to you let your daughter go upstairs with him. You know what I mean? Not a good witness to go up against to have it go up against it's different. That's all I'm saying. Alright, well, we're going to check, see how they're going on inside. Um, like what we did last night, do you swear in from everything that you've told us today is to the best of your knowledge? So, if you can? Yes. This interview it is 6.35 p.m. Right, so that was that interview. There was, we listened to the one on the 1st of March. Right? So we listened to the one on the 28th. And that was the day. They thought they was going to the press conference. <laughs> what a joke. No, they weren't. Yes, there was a press conference, but they weren't going to it. Right? So they spoke to her first. Right? And then after that, they went in and spoke to Stefan. And then arrested him. So we watched that video where they spoke to her. Then we watched the video of him being questioned. Right? Interrogated and strip searched and photographed then there's this video right and i'm thinking come on love so so show something just show that you loved your daughter she showed more emotion about the flipping backpack than she did maggie it's like a thing as her i'm going what what she's in tears over a backpack but not in tears over a daughter. Right, so the next one I've got is, I don't know if there's any after that, after the 1st of March. I know there's one more to come, which is May the 18th. Right, but that's where she's got a lawyer by now. She's not stupid now, she's getting a lawyer. So, on May the 18th, we're going to watch that one tomorrow afternoon at 3pm. Right? So, I'll be back again tomorrow afternoon at 3pm. And we'll be listening to the interview she had on the 18th of May. As I said, I don't know if there's any more since March the 1st to May. Because that's March... Nearly six weeks. No, eight weeks, March, April. Is it the April? Mali eight. Yeah, it's nearly eight, ten weeks. So there must be other interviews. Unless they wasn't able to get to her because there was rumour going around. No, I'm not one for spreading rumours and I'm not spreading a rumour. But because it had gone all quiet on with Jack, people were saying it was rumoured that perhaps she'd been booked into some health uh, mental clinic, some health clinic. You know what I mean? And while she's in one of them, law enforcement can't, can't talk to her. So if she was in there for eight weeks, say, my March. March and April, yeah, they can't say, oh, they can't go and say it, they can't even say hello, they can't talk to her, while she's in any uh, place like that, for a mental health and that lot, they can't talk to her, so perhaps May the 18th is about right, and that will be the next one, which I will be showing tomorrow, again, credit to Grizzly True Crime, for putting these interviews out there. And if you haven't already, please go and subscribe to her. And if you haven't yet done so, and you like what you've just heard and seen, I know I've got a bit uh, high-rated, high high-rated, whatever the word is. But that woman just, ooh. You think there's some bad mums out there 
you can't even call her a mum. I'm sorry, you can't give her the title of a mum. I'm sorry, you can't. We've even got, oh yes, and I've got the um, audio interview of her friend, of one of the housemates. That's an interesting one to listen to as well. So what I might do, if I haven't got anything on Sebastian Rogers tomorrow night, then I might do that interview tomorrow night. Right? Let's get the Jen, Jen Soto interviews out of the way. And then we'll be up to date with that. And then, as I said, there's a lot of other interviews I'm not bothering to put out here because they're just friends and school teachers and I've got this statements, written statements. We've gone through different statements. You know what I mean? I'm one of my lives. And I've just got to finish off my mapping, which I keep saying I'm going to do, and I will do it. I've just had so much to do. So I will get around to doing that, and I will do a video on that one. Not a live, a video. So watch out for that one as well when it comes out. And... We'll see where we go from there. As I said, I know there's more to come. Lots more to come, yeah. So please, if you like what you hear and see, if you want justice for Madeline, show your, show your support by signing up to Grizzly 2 Crime and subscribing to my channel at the same time. To kill two birds with one stone, should I say. Anyway. Till next time, stay safe. And thank you for watching.